A lot of times my pre-calculus students will ask me this question, what is calculus? So to get a little bit of a flavor of what calculus is all about, let's look at two of the fundamental questions that calculus will help us answer. So the first fundamental question is, how do you find the slope of a tangent line at a point? So here's a basic function, let's call it f of x. So you know that a tangent line is a line that just barely touches the function at a single point. All right, so this would be the, a tangent line of the function f of x. So the point of tangency is about right here. So let's say that this point of tangency is the point uh, A comma B. So we would love to find the slope of this tangent line at this particular point. Unfortunately, using our pre-calculus skills, we will immediately be stuck because what do we know about slope? We have learned that slope is uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, we've learned that slope, in other words, is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. But we only have one point here, so we can't do y minus y over x minus x. So um, we're going to have to use calculus to answer this question. The big idea behind calculus is that you can start with an approximation and then improve that approximation little by little until it becomes the exact answer that we're looking for. So in this case, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a secant line. So this red line that I've drawn would be called a secant line. And uh, of course the green line is our tangent. So of course the slope of the secant line is not the same thing as the slope of the tangent line, but we can use it as an approximation. And then I will show you how we will improve the approximation and get it closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. So um, to get started, let's go ahead and mark the x-axis and the y-axis. So um, our initial point, uh, the point of tangency, is a comma b. So we have the x value here, and then the y value is going to be here. All right, now, the first thing I need to do, this is gonna make things seem a little bit more complicated, but I don't wanna have too many unnecessary variables. So um, this B, we don't actually need the B value because the Y value is a function of the X value. In other words, the B value um, is just going to be the value of the function at a. So if this were a real function like, you know, y equals x squared or something like that, we would get the y value by simply plugging values in for x. So we don't need a whole new variable. So instead of b, we can say f at a. So in that case, uh, I'm gonna label this point of tangency as the point a comma f at a, all right? Which is just another way of saying this is the y value. Okay, now for the secant line, um, I'm gonna focus on this point of intersection and that is going to have the coordinates. Um, well, let's see. So here is the x value right here. Let's imagine that there's a certain distance
between these x values and let's call it h. Okay, so in that case, what will the x value be um, for this point? What can I call it? Well, if I start with a and then I move over a distance of h, then the new x value will be a plus h. All right, now what about the y value of this point? Um, the y value will just be the value of the function at this x value. So the y value will be f at a plus h. Okay, so the coordinates of this intersection point will be a plus h, comma, f at a plus h. All right, so now that we have um, the x and y coordinates of two points on the secant line, we can set up the slope, the slope of the secant line. All right, so let's see. So again, we know that the slope is going to be um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so the change in y divided by the change in x. So um, this new point up here, um, this is going to be uh, the second point, the x2, y2. And this green point down here, this will be the x1 and the y1. So if you look at it that way, then the slope equation is going to be, all right, so we're going to do y2 minus y1. So that's going to be f at a plus h minus f at a. All right, it's just y minus y. Um, now, x minus x. So x2 is the a plus h. So I'm going to have a plus h minus, and then x1 is just a. Now, notice that we have a and then minus a. These are going to cancel each other out. So these are going to be gone. And we're just going to be left with h. So this would be an expression for the slope of the secant line. Now it's time to take our approximation and make it better. So I've moved the secant line so that it's much closer to the slope of the tangent line. Um, so that's going to move the intersection point much closer to this point right here. So let's see how that affects everything. All right, so with the new intersection point of my secant line, now my x value is going to be here. All right, so this is my new a plus h. And this is my new y value, all right? This is my new f at a plus h. But here's what I really want you to focus on, the h value. You can see that as I make my secant line closer to the tangent line, this difference between the x values, the h value, gets smaller. So this is the key. We could imagine doing this over and over again and uh, moving the secant line closer and closer and closer to the tangent line. But the closer we get to the tangent line, the smaller this h value is going to be. Now, if we can analyze the slope of the secant line and figure out what will happen to the slope as this h value gets smaller and smaller, um, if that approaches a single number, then the number that the slope is approaching will be the exact slope of the tangent line. 
So this brings us right to the concept of a limit. If the value of the secant slope gets closer and closer to a single number, that number is called the limit. And this is the notation that we're going to learn all about. This is read the limit as h approaches 0 of this expression. So in other words, um, the limit as the h value gets smaller and smaller and smaller of the secant slope will be the tangent slope. So uh, this is just an introductory video. So we will uh, find out how to calculate these for various functions in future videos. For now, let's move on to the second fundamental question of calculus. So the second fundamental question of calculus is, how do you find the area under a curve? So um, let's go ahead and draw our y-axis and our x-axis. And here's a generic curve that we can use. So let's say we wanted to find the area under this curve between the points A and B on the x-axis. Now, using pre-calculus, we have no way of calculating the area of this. We can calculate the area of rectangles and triangles and circles, but we cannot calculate the area of a uh, shape that's bounded by some random function. But what we can do is set up an approximation that we can then make better and better, and the limit of the approximation will be the true area. Um, here's what I mean. Using pre-calculus, we do know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. So uh, we can use equally, uh, we can use rectangles of equal width to approximate the area under this curve. So if we just took whatever this um, distance from A to B is, and for example, we just divided it by four, uh, we could easily calculate the area of each one of these rectangles. Now, of course, we can see the error right here um, in this little space that's being missed that's an error all right all of these little triangles up here represent the difference between our approximation and the real area under the curve so how could we how could we make our approximation better well notice that if we use thinner rectangles, we get a smaller error, all right? This little, these little triangles are much smaller than what we had when we used fewer rectangles. So um, as we increase the number of rectangles and make them thinner and thinner, our uh, approximation of this area is going to get better and better. So if the approximation area gets closer and closer to a single number, that single number that we are approaching will be the exact area under the curve. So the bottom line is our approximate area is the sum of all the rectangles. And of course, that's what this uh, Greek letter sigma means. It means the sum. All right, so the sum of all the rectangle areas, that's the approximate area. Um, but if we take the additional step of labeling the width of these rectangles, um, let's call it H like we did before in the previous uh, example, um, then the actual area will be the limit of this sum as H approaches zero. In other words, as the width of these rectangles get smaller and smaller, um, the area that we are approaching will be the actual area under the curve. So we are going to <clears throat> work through that in future videos and I will show you how to 
calculate the area under a curve for a variety of functions. So what is calculus? Um, we looked at two fundamental questions that calculus will help us answer. One was how do you find the slope of a tangent line at a point? And we saw that we were going to need to uh, calculate this thing called a limit to figure that out. <clears throat> um, and then the second question was how do you find the area under a curve? And again, right away, we ran into this concept of a limit, um, some value that this uh, area is approaching. And uh, we're going to learn how to calculate limits in the first unit. So that's what's ahead. So just briefly, I want to say to you, if you are worried about calculus and a lot of people are scared when it's time to learn calculus, and uh, sometimes they think I'll just never learn calculus. It's too hard and I can't learn it. I'm here to tell you that you can learn calculus and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So just stay with me, watch each video in order one at a time. And by the time you get to the end of my series, you will understand calculus. So let's take this journey together. 